here we are. We're prospecting in the Pilbara. And uh, we got the brand new Garrett's, the ATXs. And um, we're just out here looking for gold. So we've been out here for two days already. And been walking all over the countryside looking for quartz. And um, when quartz and ironstone meet, that's usually where you get a little bit of gold. Sometimes it breaks away from the big stuff. And um, usually you're looking for lines of quartz that run east-west. And when east-west and um, the veins running north-south intersect is usually where you get a little bit of gold. Hopefully we'll find a little bit. So, um, just like and share. You know, subscribe if you need to, if you want to, stay updated. And um, hopefully in the next couple of videos I'll show you, like we're digging for gold. Could be a nail, could be a bullet, or a boot tack, or a piece of wire. Hear that? So after five minutes of kicking shit around, we discovered it was a bullet. It's not worth showing you. Another um, thing, um, a lot of people ask me with these new Garrett's, how do you know when the batteries are flat? Because they don't have a push button option. But what they'll do is, this one's going flat now, so it's making a beeping sound. One of the key things is when you start it up, it gives you four beeps. When it gives you four beeps, it's got 100%. When it gives you three beeps, it means it's got 75% battery left. When it gives you two beeps, it's got 50%. When it gives you one beep, it's only got... There you go. So when you've got um, one beep left, it's probably only got 25% of battery left. When it beeps like it just did just now, it's saying that it's less than 30 minutes worth of battery left. And on the keypad here, the battery is flashing. I don't know if you could pick that up, but the battery is flashing. And when the battery flashes, it means you've got 30 minutes worth of battery left. And every 60 seconds, it'll make that alarming sound. It'll start up again soon, and you'll hear it. So we haven't had any, any luck today. Uh, yesterday we found one small little half a grammar. And... That was like right by the side of the road where everyone else is driving. So, anyway, we'll um, go back to camp and we'll charge the batteries up and we're going to um, take some more videos throughout the camping holiday that we're here in the Pilbara, moving from basically one station to another. And um, that alarm you can hear in the background is just the batteries telling me that they are um, got less than half an hour left. But anyway, um, so we'll go back and charge up and show you some more videos. So, yeah. Here we are. And we're at a, um, an abandoned mine site somewhere in the Pilbara. You know, they've found gold here before. It's an old abandoned mine. Back in the late 40s it was abandoned. So if I pan around behind me, you can see the, the walls that are enclosing the mine. So we're going to go on a little adventure down to the bottom and uh, see if we can't find another vein of gold. Maybe we might get lucky. Might pick up a lot of shit tin as well. Go for a slow walk down and hopefully i uh, show you some sights as we go down. So we're starting our incline down the ramp. This is the ramp the dump trucks and the ore trucks would have used to um, bring the ore up out of the pit as you can see the steep walls with the drill marks and the where they um, use the deck cord to explode the ore outwards into the pit it's been fairly washed out so we've got to be careful here using the old trusty Garrett ATX if we come across metal it's gonna go beep Might pick up another vein of gold that they've missed. Might pick up a nugget or two. 
might pick up a whole lot of crap metal. As you can see, piece of 44 gallon drum lid. Piece of tin. It's just littered with rubbish here. The mine is back in the 40s when this mine was closed. Left a lot of shit lying around. There it is, piece of tin. So you can see the walls. That's the pit down there, so we'll walk our way slowly around and have a look. I'm gonna stop the video and um, start the video again when we get to the other side. Okay, so I've stumbled across a little hole here and I've dug out some of the soil, as you can see, and I'm still getting a fairly huge beep. So I'm going to keep digging away and when I get a little bit further I'll show you what I come up with. could be just tin or it could be something special. But as you can see from the various veins running along the wall that they followed, it's all going to lead to something. They did pull a lot of gold out of here. So we're going to get back to digging and we'll show you a little bit later on what we come up with. Okay, we um gave up on that hole because we got about a foot down and after about two hours of digging, we got to a piece of debt cord. So we buried the hole back in so it looks nice and flat and flush so that it looks like we haven't been here and after a couple of wet seasons it will um eventually fill back in and flatten out. There's not much stuff here, it's mainly just scrap tin and bits of off-cut of metals. All those little beeps you can hear is just a little piece of metal I'm walking over. Anyway, we're halfway down this um, pit now and as you can see, most of the walls are getting fairly high up around me now. And um, as you can see, there's bits of quartz all over the place. But um, we're almost at the bottom now, so I'll pan around and um, walk down the rest of the way. And you can see what this open pit looks like from the inside. So that's the ramp up the top. We've come down around here. There's fairly high walls. A bit of erosion. You can see bits of tin. So I might just turn the detector off and um, you know because there's just going to be disturbances. So you can see how the weather has eroded most of the incline away. Revealing some of the bedrock below. The veins of quartz going up through the sides of the walls here. Different sedimentaries worth of rock. Different colours. Shitloads of mineralisation. And all the sample bags that have flown down. With the, with the currents over time. Trees growing on the platforms here. Little bushes and shrubs. Birds have made nests up in the crack forms up in the rock there. And uh, we're making our way slowly to the bottom of the pit. So we started at the top, now we're here. Soon we'll be starting at the bottom and making our way back up. So now we made it to the bottom. 
and this is what the bottom of the pit looks like it probably would have gone down a further five or six meters but due to weather and erosion it's all come down the inclines that we've just walked down all the way through here all the way through here and it started to fill up from the bottom eventually 300 years this will just be a hole in the ground or a small little divot in the ground henceforth nature's way of taking back over what mankind has taken out so this is what it's like at the bottom of a pit no gold but shitloads of tin off cut metal scrap deck cord Element rubbish. Yeah. You can see the quartz running through the rocks. All the different types of terraformer here. Okay, so I mean they say where you get quartz and ironstone mixed together, you're gonna get gold. Not so the case here, I reckon. You know, bands of ironstone all the way through the rock forms here all the way up through there you can tell how the harder rock has remained whereas the, all the lighter clay soil and silt has sort of washed through the cracks and left these big gouges up a little bit further when we get past these clump of trees you can see the band of ironstone tailing in the quartz. Significant tales of how gold is formed in these parts. All the way up through the walls. These old timers, mate, knew where to look for it. Here we go. Ironstone all the way through the quartz here. They might have been getting two minerals out of here, but I tell you, there's not much of it left now. As we make our way back up outside the pit, we'll try and make our way to all the dongers and quarters there. See what life might have been like back then. We'll see you at the top. Just on a quick note, when you start to venture into places like these, it's a good idea to check your surroundings. And if there's any form of erosion that is beyond your control, or it looks like there's no safe way of access or egress, don't bother doing it. I scope this area out from all different views to make sure that if I come in, I had a good way of getting back out. It's a good idea that you guys do the same thing. Just a quick note for you. If, if you feel like going for an adventure around your local. Also, use of a drone is good as well. You can get close-up views of the sides of stuff. Without actually having to put yourself in harm's way.